Hello, and welcome to the Lessons Learned from 99 Lead Project series, brought to you by the Green Building Research Institute. I'm Rebecca Joan Brown, and I'll be presenting the course today, Lessons Learned from 99 Lead Projects Materials. This is the fifth installation in our 99 Projects series. For this series, we've looked at 99 lead case study projects distilling the information and strategies that we feel will be most beneficial to you as a lead professional. Each of the courses in this series is worth two lead-specific hours for BDNC, IDNC, or O&M. Lessons Learned from 99 Lead Projects is a six-part series that looks at 99 lead gold and platinum certified projects to identify what strategies will best satisfy the credit requirements in each of the six lead categories, sustainable sites, water efficiency, energy and atmosphere, materials and resources, indoor environmental quality, and innovation and design. We will be looking at the most frequently applied strategies, those that are easiest to implement in both new and existing projects, and those solutions that stand out as especially unique or elegant solutions. Today's installation of the 99 project series focuses on the credits that are available in the materials and resources sections of the BDNC, O&M, and IDNC rating systems. We will discuss how some of our case study projects earned lead credits from materials and resources section, and look at which solutions are most universally applicable and most effective at achieving sustainability and lead certification goals. There are several ways that the materials specified for a project will influence the building's overall sustainability. As we've mentioned, the embodied energy of project materials can have a significant impact. How much embodied energy is involved and where this energy is concentrated depends upon the material or product specified and on the manufacturing process used. Some building products, such as stone, will require a lot of energy for their initial extraction but are minimally processed and can often be procured locally to, produ to reduce transportation energy. Other materials, such as ceramic tile, are made from raw materials that can be extracted easily but are energy intense in the manufacturing and processing stages. Cork is an example of a material that requires minimal energy to harvest and process, but then requires a lot of transportation energy since it's only grown in very specific areas and then must be shipped around the world. Some of the embodied energy of materials and products may be mitigated by the practices and policies of specific manufacturers for instance, by using more energy efficient equipment or by using renewable sources of energy to power factories. Sourcing materials from local or regional producers will also help to reduce the embodied energy of project elements by reducing the miles traveled to the project site. A materials life cycle analysis can influence both sustainability and project budgets. Projects that will need to be replaced more frequently will generally end up costing the project owner more in the long run and create waste from discarding old materials and the construction waste associated with replacement. Replacement will also necessitate the production and sourcing of new materials with the associated energy use. How the material must be maintained is also an important consideration in a life cycle analysis. The products used for cleaning and refinishing may be toxic or otherwise harm the environment, and the materials that require frequent attention will increase maintenance costs for the project. The Athena Institute has a program that architects and engineers can try for free that will help to determine some of the life cycle impacts of a building based on the structure and materials used. Renewable materials are those whose stocks can be regenerated in 10 years or less. For the most part, these will be plant-based products such as bamboo, rubber, cork, linoleum, cotton bat, wheat board, or straw bale blocks. 
Using rapidly renewable products reduces the amount of land and resources that must be dedicated to producing raw materials. For example, because bamboo grows about five times faster than hardwood trees, a smaller planting area is needed because the material can be harvested more frequently. Very few of the projects that we studied had earned points for this credit. While using renewable materials is very good for the environment, many of the building products made from renewable sources are fairly new to the market, and some builders and designers may not be as familiar with them, with a few exceptions, such as linoleum. Another hindrance that many renewable materials have is a different look or maintenance requirements from conventional counterparts, and designers often often work off of the aesthetic expectations of project owners and building occupants. Renewable materials, most notably bamboo, have been increasingly used in buildings and are now more conventional and expected than they were previously, and designers have become familiar with how to use these products effectively, so we expect that more project projects will be able to earn points for this credit in the coming years. The Renewable Materials Credit is not available for core and shell projects. However, new construction and school projects may earn one point for including 2.5% renewable materials by cost, and can earn an exemplary performance point for including 5%. IDNC projects can earn one point if 5% of project materials are renewable, and an exemplary performance point for 10% renewable materials. One of the projects that did earn points for their use of renewable materials is the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection's Cambria Office Building in Evansburg, Pennsylvania. The project made using renewable, recycled, and reused materials a primary goal from the start. The project used wheat board for wainscoting, and the rubber flooring used was not only renewable, but made from 100% recycled materials. Both of these materials are fairly commonplace, and using wheat board rather than traditional wood for the wainscoting is also a cost-saving measure. 